specifically about what your conversations look like today with a company like Facebook or, or Twitter or Google when it comes to these practices? Absolutely. So we're having conversations with them on, on twofold. Um, one of the conversations we had was with our tech accord where we said we won't help any nation state um, hack civilians, basically. That's, that's the highest, you know, I'll put that on the highest level. There's a lot more detail to that, but that's the highest level. The second thing is on in information sharing, and it largely is wrapped around nation state, by the way. Threats we're seeing, signaling we're seeing, things that we're seeing. If we see that a sector in the United States, a particular sector is being attacked by a particular actor, and we have reason to believe that it's valid, then we're going to notify our peers also. We have a very um, explicit relationship in how we share with those type of peers and how they share with us also. And how does that work when you think about Microsoft's global presence and sharing with foreign governments? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. So it we have um, a government sharing program that is um, regulated by local laws and regulated by the fact that we're, we're a United States company. So um, we will share with global governments if they are part of our government sharing practice and if we've both signed on and we said this is the limitations and this is what we can share. But we do have a lot of rigor around what we will share with different government agencies globally. And earlier in the conversation when you were talking about just the number of threats that Microsoft sees on a daily basis. You mentioned artificial intelligence. How essential is AI to the future of the private sector's battle in, on the cybersecurity front? Yeah, so as you and I discussed earlier, I'm writing a whole series of blogs on AI. I've been in technology and security long enough that I don't chase the shiny object, you know, whatever the newest shiny object is. So I taught, decided to take this mission of writing a blog series on what is the practical application of artificial intelligence in security? What can we actually do with it today versus, you know, what's this big pie in the sky promise? And I will tell you the ability to synthesize six and a half trillion potential events, right? Low fidelity signal, that's something that when you look at machine learning and you layer artificial intelligence on top of it, you can get smarter about faster. And that's what it's about. It's about being able to detect faster and being able to separate what's a real threat versus what's a false threat. And giving your admins, um, someone on stage earlier talked about the cybersecurity hiring shortage globally, right? It's millions of people. It depends on what stat you look at, which means the people you have, you want working on real data. Right? You want them working on real things that are actionable, and you want them working on the highest priority tasks. So the ability of AI to de-conflict for your security admins is one of the most practical use cases today, and we're using it today, and we have some examples of that, because I think that is probably the thing that we can actually be super tangible to anybody, and I see a lot of organizations, by the way, using AI in that way today as they, as they bring it to maturity.